Hello and welcome back to the WordPress for Beginners 2015 tutorial series. If you're watching this video, then I want to first congratulate you on making it this far. Theory work can be a bit dull at times, but is absolutely necessary in order to build a strong foundation. So hang in there, we are almost done. In this video, we are going to talk about configuring your settings in WordPress so you can optimize your site and hit the ground running. From the dashboard, click on settings from the left hand menu and we'll arrive at the general settings sub panel. The general settings sub panel controls basic configurations of your site. You can change the site title, tagline, and web address. The admin email is where WordPress will send email notifications for things like new user registrations. You can enable or disable public registrations on your site, and if you do decide to enable public registration, you're able to specify the default roles for these new users. It's a good idea to set this to subscriber, as subscribers can read content, but not create, edit, or publish content on your site. You can select your time zone, as well as the date and time format you'd like to use on your site, and you can select a preference for the week starting day. If you've made any changes, be sure to save it. The writing sub panel controls the editor you use to create posts and pages, as well as the process of content creation. Convert emoticons will convert typed emoticons into graphics, and you can choose whether you'd like WordPress to automatically correct simple HTML errors. You can specify a default category for new posts, where no other category is selected, and a default post format. We went over the Press This tool in a previous video, but just to recap, using the Press This bookmarklet, we're able to clip various content from any web page and publish it onto our site with a link to the source. You can also publish posts on your site using email. Simply enter email account details and WordPress will periodically check for new emails sent to this address. The subject line of your email will be the post title and the body of your email will be the post content. If you are utilizing this post via email feature, it's paramount that you keep this email account secure, as any messages sent to this email address will be published on your website. WordPress has generated a few random strings you can use for more secure email addresses. You can also select a default category for posts published via email. Pingomatic is a site update service. What this means is when a new post has been published on your website, WordPress automatically sends out a notification to a site update service like Pingomatic. Pingomatic then alerts search engines to your new content. This helps your content get indexed more quickly. You can add additional update services here. Make sure to only have one update service per line. Again, if you've made any changes, make sure to save. Reading settings controls how your front page is displayed, blog settings, and search engine visibility. If you'll recall, in a previous video we discussed how WordPress is driven by two types of content, posts and pages, and when building a site, you can decide whether you'd like it to be post-based or page-based. If your site is post-based and you'd like your front page to display latest blog posts, then select this option. If your site is page-based and you'd like to display a static page as your homepage, then choose this option. You're then able to select a page that acts as your homepage and another page to act as the posts page. The posts page will of course contain all of your blog posts. Let me demonstrate. At the moment we have latest posts selected, so if we visit our site, blog posts are displayed on the homepage. If I specify a static page for both the front page and posts page, our site now displays a static page as the home page and all of our blog posts are now displayed on the posts page. You're able to specify how many posts you'd like to display on your blog page at one time and how many posts will show in your RSS feed. You can choose to show the full text of your articles in your RSS feeds or a summary of your articles that will require people to visit your site in order to read the full article. 
and you can choose whether or not you'd like your site to be visible to search engines. If you do not want your site to be indexed by search engines, check this box. We covered discussion settings in a previous video, so we are going to move on to media settings. When an image is uploaded, WordPress automatically creates multiple versions of the image, each with a different size. The media sub panel allows you to set the maximum dimensions for a particular size, including the thumbnail, medium, and large. It's a good idea to organize your uploads into month and year based folders, so it's easier to track down media you've uploaded. We have now covered all major features and functions of WordPress, so you should be fairly comfortable in creating and managing your own website using WordPress. If you need any further clarifications on any aspects of this course, or if you are stuck on a particular lecture, feel free to leave me a message and I'll do my best to help you. This wraps up Chapter 3 of WordPress Starter 2015. Stay tuned for more content and good luck with your new WordPress website.